Bizarre Brain Comics. <laughs> the Dark Librarian. Hello, my comic book fiends. <laughs> and welcome to Bizarre Brain Comics. I am the Dark Librarian, and I'm here to tell tales of terror. <laughs> And here to help me is my good friend, Mr. Bones. And he is aided by my other good friend, Yorick. Yes, that's Yorick right there. Uh -huh. But he's limited on what he can do because he has no body. <laughs> oh, yes. And here is what we're going to be talking about today. Boris Karloff. Tales of Mystery from Gold Key Comics. This is number 40 from 1979. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Bones. I'll take it from here. <laughs> oh, yes. Boris Karloff. <laughs> As I said. Oh. And this is the real Boris Karloff, Tales of Mystery, from the real Gold Key Comics, not the the new pale imitations, I'm sorry to say. I was really hoping that uh, the, the revival of Gold Key and Boris Karloff would be, would, would have been better. I still got the first two issues. I don't think the third issue is out yet. I haven't seen it, if it is. And I'll probably get it if I find it. But... And we'll see if it's improved. But as I said, this is number... Oh, what did I say? 90? It's number 95. 1979. And uh, this may have been a reprint print from 1965. Uh, it has some stuff. Whether the entire thing is reprinted or not, I do not know. It has two stories in it. The first one, of course, no, uh, no creator credit, so I have, I have no idea. Even when I, I was looking, I couldn't find the, anything regarding uh, uh, creator credits. But the first one, First story is drawn by Alberto Giolitti, who is best known for his work on uh, a, a whole host of, of uh, Gold Key titles uh, that were TV tie-ins and uh, more realistic adventure stuff. Uh, you know, he did uh, uh, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, Star Trek, as well as um, Turok, Son of Stone, for many, many years. And the second story, I can't be positive, but I think it was drawn by Jose Delbo. Um, <clears throat> it sure looks like his art, but the inking is a little, little different, but I'm used to seeing his pencils inked by someone else. So it might be. And then has this great painted cover by, I, I believe, is George Wilson. <clears throat> But when I look, see, of course, has the uh, photo cover, Boris Karloff photo on, up in the corner. And <clears throat> and the, the George Wilson, I'm presuming it is, it looks like George Wilson uh, painted cover. As he did so many, most of them from this era. Um, but I look, <clears throat> I look here, here, and see this man here in this face. All I see is Steve Holland on both of these faces. Now, for those of you who, who are not familiar, who do not know, that Steve Holland was an actor and model. He portrayed uh, Flash Gordon in the uh, 1950s uh, cheaply made uh, Flash Gordon TV series. And, of course, he... And he did a, a, an admirable job for the time and stuff. But so, like he was also, and especially after that, an artist's model. And he, because he had a very 
very uh, very strong features uh, uh distinctive uh, uh good handsome man features and he was muscular and and had uh, uh, of course a, a great body so he modeled for a whole host of <clears throat> artists in the 60s and 70s um and be, be, he, his, his visage is probably best known best known as the face of Doc Savage, as as painted by um, James Bama for the Doc Savage novels of the 60s. He was that model. And, and you pick up all kinds of, uh, like, men's adventure, westerns, etc., uh, from the 60s and especially in the early 70s, uh, the cover paintings, you will see his face on it. Because he was, he was Doc Savage. He also modeled as, as uh, did was the model in for covers of uh, of the Avenger, uh, also by uh, uh, written written by um, um, <sighs> Kenneth Robson, Lester Dent, I know, but um, <clears throat> and I I have so many I see I would see his on those old books I see his face all the time, so that is I believe, but this is the first time I. Rec recall seeing his face on the cover of a comic book so <laughs> that's a neat little bit now okay uh, and also one of the things besides it saying uh, having copyright 1965 on and some of it for uh, uh, um, indicating there was may have was probably whole, in whole or part uh, uh, reprinted from from an issue from one or more issues from 65 um, as in many of the earlier stories and not so much in later ones Boris Karloff himself takes play is plays a mine a small minor role in at least in one of the stories I want to show you this uh, of course advertisement for hostess Twinkies featuring Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel returns to Earth, and uh, it's and it's just funny because of course this is Gold Key and this is uh, uh, Marvel characters, and of course these ads were running all over. But I did a, I did an episode on those ads, and uh, but Gold Key and some of the other, other smaller publishers didn't didn't uh, have their own characters in these. Uh, now some of the licensed characters that. Uh, uh, Gold Key um, had the license for, uh, like uh, uh, like some of the Warner Brother Warner Brothers characters, etc., um, uh, were in some of these ads. But for the most part, they were like Marvel and or DC characters in the ads in Gold Key, because normally you'd only see the uh, uh, the Marvel character ads in Marvel comics, for example. So here we go, Boris Karloff, and this really looks like Boris here. Telling he's telling the tale, but in this case, he here he is. He's right here, and he is conversing, meeting the person actually telling him the story. Of course, Boris is our horror host, and this is about the uh, the five casks of greed. It says uh, this fellow uh, Andrew something or other, and he's an archaeologist, and he's uh, confined to a wheelchair, and he tells the story of, uh, of some years. Sometime before, he and his uh, and a friend of his, uh, who are also archaeologists, uh, examining in a museum a scroll, and it had some in, but it was only a part of the scroll. And it turns out that oh, his like grandfather, who is also an archaeologist, this, this is his friend Ted, the dark-haired fellow, had the uh, had a fragment of the scroll which told it tells something of some kind of treasure, but the critical part was missing was well, he had he had that critical part so they decided it was on the island of crete they go to crete to start a dig <coughs> and but they're digging for treasure not for, so much for relics and they fi they find the location they get there and they get in there and there's all these these casks embedded in the in the wall and uh they're supposed to have treasures in them but it says you can um, you have to do this that or the other thing uh each one, each cask represents uh, something else. It's all revolving around greed. 
At first they can't get it open, they can't get it open. And then, but each one had, you have to, had to do something. So he uh, have to like steal from a poor, poor person in this case. So he, he did that, come back and the first one opened right up. And I got lots of pearls, lots of stuff. So, but the next one's not supposed to be opened for another 10 years. They split the split the loot, and uh, Andrew he goes he goes on a big sp spinning spree, and you can see a, a, a mo see, panel here just describing a period of time he's just blowing the blowing the bucks, and he goes, well, uh, he's out of money, so he goes back, even though it's not the ten years aren't, aren't up. He goes back, he examines. It, why should it necessarily have to be ten years? And he do, does uh, the, the terrible things that were required. Each one gets worse. Uh, has to tor uh, torment an animal or something. He and he, he gets it. And then you have another one is um, uh, burn a fisherman's catch, and he sits a, a, a fishing boat on fire with the catch in there, not caring that it's that this these things this decimates. And uh, the income for uh, the whole village, actually, and uh, of course this is in Crete in Greece, and get that one up. But then the next one, he j he just gre gets greedier and greedier. Says so even though this this time hasn't elapsed, he's still able to get these open. What's well, something about uh, wiping out a village? So he sends, creates a landslide and w and wipes out an entire small village, and it works. And then it has comes to betraying a friend. And he goes, well, I've actually already done that because he didn't tell his friend about it. He gets it and it opens up and then it goes, ah, but it's only 30 pieces of silver. Of course, that's, that's more biblical, not Greek, but who cares? Uh, so he gets the loot, but it, it doesn't bother him that much. He gets the loot. He's having a good old time, uh, blowing his money, meeting meeting people. And suddenly, where he's at dinner with some, some people and suddenly... <gasps> He starts aging and aging and aging. Then we see, as he's talking to Boris from his wheelchair, he was wearing a mask. He takes his mask off, and you see him as a as a shrunken, shriveled little old man, even though he's only like in his thirties because he's aged uh, uh, fifty or sixty years just overnight. And then Boris closes it up. Now this one, this story doesn't have Boris other than as the. Uh, the uh, um, um, the host he doesn't actually interact like he did in the other one. It's Phantom of the Films. This is uh, we see uh, this ghostly pirate attacking these men on sh on board ship, knocks them over the side, and it turns out it's all on a movie set. And this actor he's he's supposed to be, uh, uh, he's always playing uh, ghostly parts. And El Spectre is a whole series, but it says that he actually has a connection to the. Uh, to the spirit realm and to the supernatural, but no one believes him. So, and he there's this particular part here, as he's talking, thinking, uh, and griping to himself. And he hears about the uh, another um, a movie coming up at another studio because he's he makes a lot of money, but they're they're actually schlock movies basically. And here's a bigger production, and he wants wants the part, but because he's so identified, typecast with the schlock movies. Uh, they, uh, his director friend won't hire him, but he uh, sneaks aboard the ship that's uh, taking them to the location, and he does some, <laughs> so, uh, puts on a, uh, an act surprising everyone. It's it's him and says, "Aha, great great gag!" But no, you're not going to get it. And he's so po'd that you're gonna you're gonna be sorry. So here they are. No one's seen him uh, since that night. They get get there. They they start shooting, and things start happening. This is supposed to be. Uh, a real haunted place, and uh, um, they're uh, just making a movie about this uh, this this haunted castle. And uh, if things start happening, they see her, sc her screams, and they look around and they don't know what to make of it. And then they got this shooting this one scene when the ghost is supposed to come down, and there it does. But then it it does stuff that's not in the script. And, oh my gosh! And then they realize the wire the wire was busted. That wasn't the rip their uh, fake ghost. Then they realize. Then they discover that that the uh, the actor had apparently committed suicide and uh, uh, threw himself from the lost at sea. Threw himself, threw himself from the ship. He was lost overboard. 
and that was apparently his ghost haunting them. So, <laughs> so there we go. Woo! Now it's kind of a little different here because quite often uh, the Boris Kor Karloff tales of mystery stories were um, were uh, uh, involved monsters, and so these neither of these involved monsters at all. So, so that's all I've got to share with you this time. I hope you enjoyed that. I love the Boris Karloff tales of mystery and the other uh, um, the other gold key classic gold key mystery titles from the 60s and 70s but especially Boris Karloff so I hope you enjoyed that like share and subscribe do leave your comments down below what do you think of Boris Karloff of the gold key mystery stories <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. And remember, <laughs> comics are art. <laughs> <laughs>